Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I have this picture hanging above the door, the interior of my office, the door that takes me out into the hallway. It is, and because you cannot see it probably from where you're sitting, it is a calligraphied verse from our psalm today, Psalm 37, verse 5. Wow, look at that. That's pretty cool. It reads, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. I inherited this picture from my grandmother. When she passed away, it was among many of the things that were gathered together and that we as family and friends uh, chose as meaningful to us. This was meaningful to me for three reasons. The first was that my father is the one who did the calligraphy and it's a very pretty picture. Secondly, I love the verse. It is a powerful one that we read today in our psalm. And third, I remember exactly where it hung in my grandparents' home. I can imagine how my grandmother would walk by and read it and say to herself, Dora, commit your way to the Lord. Dora, trust in him and he will act. Actually, I don't remember where this hung in my grandparents' home. I honestly don't even remember it hung anywhere. I called my dad to say, you did the calligraphy, right? So that's true. And he said, oh yeah, was there a special occasion? You know, I don't remember. <laughs> Do you remember where it hung in grandma's house? No, I don't even remember it on the wall. <laughs> to be truthful, uh, I do not remember where this particular picture hung, but I do remember where another saying hung in her home. It was this, quit your belly aching. <laughs> <laughs> that picture and those words I remember well. But maybe I don't remember exactly where this hung, but I do remember the faith of my grandma and my grandpa. I remember reading the Bible around the kitchen table as devotions after our meal. I remember how they built their house purposefully to have a window that faced the little church where they worshiped and how the cross and its illumination in the night gave them comfort and strength. Well, as I mentioned, I inherited this and so I decided to put it in my office here at Bethel, right above the door so that as I was going on my way to do the work of ministry or tend to my daily life, I could pause and read it and remind myself, Anjanette, commit your way to the Lord. Anjanette, trust in him and he will act. Well, I'm not a perfect person and I'm not a perfect pastor. And to be totally honest, I, I sort of forgot about this picture above my door until I was preparing the sermon for today and I thought, where have I seen that verse? <laughs> Oh, right there, right in front of my face. <laughs> I wonder if that's ever happened to you. As a person of faith, you know you have the resources, the gift of faith, but you just sort of forget to use it or to draw upon it. Maybe you've even asked yourself the question, am I Christian enough? Do I have enough faith to handle this situation? Maybe if I was more faithful, well, maybe these things could happen to me. Or maybe if I was more faithful, I, I wouldn't worry so much. Maybe the answers and the direction are right in front of me, God, and I just don't have enough faith to see it. It reminds me of a blonde joke, and I can tell it because I'm blonde. A blonde went into a service station and asked the manager for a coat hanger because she had locked her keys in the car. The manager was glad to help, gave her a coat hanger, and she went out to the car and was working diligently. She didn't seem to have much success, so the manager went out to see what was the problem. Well, he walked out to the car, and he noticed her working very hard, and then he looked in the car, and there was another blonde saying, a little bit to the left, a little to the left. <laughs> is that how it is for us sometimes? The help is right there and we just don't see it. The words of faith are on our lips, but we just can't seem to articulate them. Well, all of our readings today deal with matters of faith. They speak to and for faith. 
The psalm, as I mentioned earlier, speaks of committing our ways to the Lord to trust in him and to have faith that he will act. And then Paul's letter in 2 Timothy reminds us that faith and the love of Christ is a treasure, and it is a treasure to be guarded. And then our gospel reading for today, Jesus likens faith to a mustard seed? Well, maybe it would be helpful for us to walk into where we find ourselves in our reading today. Our reading begins by addressing the disciples as apostles, and that language is intentional. Jesus is now preparing his disciples to be leaders, and that word apostle means to be one who leads, and these will be ones who will lead others to and in the faith. These leaders now have been given lots of stories, parables that Jesus has used in his teachings, ones that we have heard in these past weeks in worship, and they will help to articulate for them in their ministry what it means to envision the kingdom of God, what it means to be a follower, what it means to trust and believe. Now, Jesus is preparing to send out these apostles, those who are sent then to lead others in the faith, and it's a pretty tall order. In fact, the per first part of chapter 17, where we hear our gospel reading today, begins with almost like an instruction manual for these apostles. In these opening verses, Jesus lays out for them two important tasks they will be called to do. The first is that they will be called to be ones who do not cause anyone to stumble in the faith. They are to be cautious with this important work. Jesus says, if you cause even a little one to stumble in the faith, why, it would be better if there were a millstone around your neck and you were thrown into the ocean than to lead someone astray. <sighs> wow, what a responsibility. And then secondly, they are called to rebuke, to call out sinfulness in the community and in the people they encounter. And not only that, to call out that sinfulness, but also to offer a word of forgiveness and then to embody that forgiveness as well. Whew. The disciples must have thought there was a mistake. Jesus had recruited the wrong freshman class. This this sounds like Apostleship 501, like the fast track to Billy Graham, not 101. Is it any wonder that the disciples say to Jesus, increase our faith? You must have the wrong group here. And if we're going to do this work, boy, we need a little more faith. We need something more. Maybe someone else has more faith than us. Maybe if you just give us a little more of that faith, we can do those tasks you lay out for us. And maybe, maybe their anxieties and inadequacies make them not only ask for this, but actually they demand it. Increase our faith, they say. Well, we would expect that Jesus would offer a comforting word, an encouraging word, a word of blessing to them. But Jesus is rather blunt in our gospel today. He essentially says to them, quit your belly aching. Quit your belly aching, people. You have faith. You have faith. It's even the size of a mustard seed, but oh, what that faith can do through me. I love the translation from the message, Eugene Peterson's translation of the Bible. You don't need more faith, Jesus says. Faith isn't about more or less you have this kernel, this kernel of, of faith, this poppy seed worth of faith in your hand. And you could say to a sycamore tree, go jump in the lake, and it would do it. You see, we often use language around faith that sounds more like a contract than a covenant. A contract says, if I do this, I can expect these results. And for the most part, this works very well for us in general life. But faith isn't 
a contract. Faith is a gift, a covenant, a promise given to us that we don't even deserve, but is poured out to us. We cannot earn it. It is received. It is a blessing. So people of God, it seems our word for today is to quit our belly aching and to recognize the faith we have, even if it is small, and even if we feel like it is not enough, faith is not a quantity. Faith is a quality, a quality of life found in Jesus Christ, our greatest treasure. And there is good news. That gift of faith can be nourished nurtured in such a way that it does fill us. You've come today to worship because you have seen how that happens for you in your life of faith. How hearing God's word fills your heart again with hope, renews your sense of promise, sends you on your way with a sense of Jesus' presence and a peace that passes understanding. You taste a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine and you are satisfied. This is not an extravagant meal that fills us up till we feel stuffed. No, we are satisfied with the true bread, the true gift of Christ's own self, and that is enough. Every time we come to this table, we may at times feel empty because often we fill ourselves with those things that do not keep us satisfied in life, but here we can taste and see that the Lord is good. So we can continue to be freed, to commit our ways to the Lord, to trust in him, and to believe that he will act. For through God, all things are possible and God will provide you with what you need for this day and each day to come. Amen. Amen.